Hello Crochet is the way followers and welcome newcomers. In this video I have a simple granny stitch dishcloth worked in the round. This one will be designed more for beginners. I'll be walking you through how to make the double crochet stitch and the single crochet stitch for the border. A more experienced crocheter you might find this video has a little more information than you want but you can skip ahead to the notes that are between segments, which is a great place to pause if you need a chance to catch up. But a more experienced crocheter, you'll find the written pattern in the notes, and you can skip ahead if you want and just use that. You may find that I go between calling this a dishcloth and a washcloth in the video, and that's because this was my kid's idea. She said she wanted a round purple washcloth, so that's what I made. But I do think that this pattern would be better suited for a dishcloth. I'll be using a worsted weight cotton yarn, any equivalent will do for you. And I'll be using a size H hook, and although that's not marked on this old all-American hook, that would be a size 8 or a 5 millimeter. One of those notes is coming up right now with more information for you in case I've forgotten anything here. And when we come back, we'll make a dishcloth. See you soon. Okay, I will give you just a few minutes to get ready in case you still need more time. And in the meantime, I will explain that I am still sounding a little bit rough. I've been sick and I'm getting better, but I'm sorry if I don't sound the best right now. Hopefully you can at least understand me so you can learn. We're not going to start with a slip knot and we're going to work into the very first chain we'll make all of our stitches for the first round. If you are a very, very new beginner, you may want to go ahead and make a chain three or a chain four and join it with a slip stitch. You might find that a little bit easier. But go ahead and give this method a try. See if it works out for you. You might find you like it. But here is where a very new beginner may find a little bit of trouble. I'll walk you through it. Instead of starting with a slip knot, we totally skip the knot. And I should have explained before I did that. Your working yarn will come over the front of your hook. Your tail will go over the back of your hook and you'll bring the tail forward in front of the working yarn. Go ahead and leave that loop nice and big. You can tighten it up later just like a slip knot, but it's going to be our first stitch. And you can hold where it crosses over so that it doesn't come apart. Yarn over and pull through that loop. And here's where leaving it nice and big like that will also help because we are not going to chain three for double crochet and we're not going to chain two and skip it. We're going to chain one and we'll skip that. It's not going to count as a stitch. It's just a place to make a little height so that you can make a double crochet. That will be your first stitch. Yarn over for a double crochet bring the hook around and that's where holding that loop and the tail will help. Insert your hook under the top two loops of the chain, yarn over and pull up a loop. Yarn over, pull through two loops and yarn over and pull through the last two loops. There's your first double crochet. 
Now here's also where we will begin the next set, the very first granny stitch. We're not going to complete this one right here. That's the end of the last one. I know that might sound confusing because it's the beginning of the round, but that is the end of the last set of granny stitches. So we'll chain one here that makes the chain one at the end of the stitch. Another double crochet, yarn over, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two loops, and yarn over, pull through two loops. Now we'll make two more double crochet. That makes the three double crochet of the granny stitch, and sometimes the granny stitch is worked without a chain, and sometimes it is. We're going to make a chain. There's your three double crochet. Chain one, and on to the next set. Three double crochet. and chain one. Now that is the beginning over here and two sets. So we'll need to make five complete sets of the granny stitch and then we'll need to complete that one at the beginning to make a total of six. And here is where it starts to look like a square. So we want a circle. That should be one more granny stitch to make five. I will count that quickly just to double check. One, two, three, four, five, and then there's our beginning stitch here. To complete that, we make two double crochet, and remember we're skipping over that chain one. Ooh, I have my hook stuck through somewhere I shouldn't. The chain one doesn't count as a stitch, it just gets us to where we can make one. Alright, now for you beginners, let me pull my center tight a little bit there first. Here, if I can get it in focus, is the chain one that we made after the first double crochet. So here is the top of your very first double crochet. I have very poor lighting so I hope you can see that. Chain one, top of the double crochet. And I know if you're not a beginner you're probably wishing I would get on with that, but we insert our hook in the top of the double crochet yarn over, pull through, and pull through that loop first, lip stitch. And the sun has decided to go behind a cloud, so this seems like a very great place to take a break. I'm going to be including some notes so that if you need time to catch up, if you'd like to see the pattern in written form, that will be coming up, and when I come back, we'll work on round two. I am going to take a moment and back up 
so I can show you both a tip and a trick. If you don't want to follow along, that's fine. I've also tried to improve my light a little bit since the last segment, so hopefully you can see this a little bit better if you didn't see it the last time. I'll be joining the round again. I'm going to pull out my slip stitch and pick up the last two loops of the double crochet. Here is where if you wanted to change colors, you would. You would yarn over, pull the new color through. I'm not doing that, but I'm showing you that because the way this pattern has worked with the six granny stitches in the beginning, it makes a little six petaled flower design, if you can see that there on the first round. So if you started with a pretty flower color, and then you change to green, on the next round look like leaves around the flower and then you could change again to a third color to finish off and it'd be a pretty design instead of a plain purple dishcloth the purple washcloth that my kid wanted so what I am going to show you is that tail who likes doing more work than they have to? We're going to weave that tail in right now as we work. Make sure you have it pulled tight and bring it up and over your working yarn. Yarn over and pull through two loops to complete the stitch. Make sure you don't have slack in that. Bring your tail up and over the working yarn again. Now, if the sun will stay out for me, here's our chain one, and here's the beginning double crochet. Insert the hook in there, yarn over, pull through a loop, and pull it all the way through. Now there's our tail in the back. Let's bring it back forward to begin the next round. That's where we'll chain one, and that doesn't count as a stitch. Now find that chain one space in between here. With just a chain one, it can be a little harder to find, but you can find your spaces in there if you just spread it out a little with your finger. We're going to work into that chain space and over the tail. See it got locked in the middle of that chain one? Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. Now if you want, let's back up here. I think this would be a good place. We're just going to go ahead and bring that tail right up and over to the next round. Chain one and leave that tail there. Here's where we will increase. So we're going to make two granny stitches in that space. And just like the beginning round, that one double crochet that counts as the last double crochet of the granny stitch that we will finish at the end of the round. Make three double crochet for the set. And what I've done here is when I worked this pattern the first time, to make a chain one in between all of these here increases way too much. It makes a ruffled mess that you have to work one more round in order to get the ruffle out. And I thought that was a little bit too big for a washcloth or a dishcloth. So we're not going to chain one there. We're going to move on to the next set in the next chain one space. Make three double crochet. And then again, 
we are increasing. So we chain one and make three more double crochet in that space. Now again, don't chain one in between there. Find the next space. And if you find that maybe your gauge is just a little bit different, which I will show you how to measure your gauge at the end of this round here, just so we can check and make sure that it's close. But maybe you're using a different yarn. Maybe your gauge is a little bit different. Move on without chaining one to the next. Maybe you will find that you can chain one in between these sets. It makes the pattern a little more simple to work that way because you're just doing the same thing over and over. And you don't have to remember, oh, don't chain one there. But for my yarn and my gauge, it ruffled it up just a little too much. You will see that by starting with six granny stitches in such a tight space, it still is going to ruffle some. There's a little bit too much material right there. But we fix that in some following rounds. So don't worry if your project is not completely flat, but do worry if it starts to see how this is ruffled up. It has ruffles. If it's not ruffled and it's tight and it's curling like into a little doll hat, then you will want to add a chain one in between those. Because if it's curling, that means you need more stitches. Okay, so we have two granny stitches in each chain one, and we are back at the beginning. We need to finish this set right here. Work into the same space, let me get my hook out of there and show you before I do it. Look into that same space where the chain one and the first double crochet starts. Right ahead of that. Make your last two double crochet. I need to make sure I'm not working over my tail here. And there we go. Now, once again, I got this a little twisted, so let me work it around and you can see it better. Here is our chain one. The chain one will be the loop before that double crochet. So here is our first double crochet. And because I brought the tail up there, I want to make sure I get that over my hook before I make a slip stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through. And don't worry about that ruffled mess. We will fix that. Working in the round does not always have to remain completely straight as long as yours doesn't look like a bath poof or something. That might be way too many. All right, if you need a chance to catch up, I'm going to be including notes for round two coming up in just a moment. It's a great pla place to pause if you need time. And I will be back for round three.
getting ready for round three, you may ask yourself first, wait a second, I thought this was supposed to be a circle. Why do we have a hexagon? And that's because where we didn't make a chain one makes a flat spot. Where we did, it makes a bump. And in this round, we will fix that. If you can see it in the finished piece, we will increase where there's a flat spot. There's a flat spot here. We'll increase in those spaces. And where there's a point, here's your point, we're not going to increase. And that evens it out. But this round, we will be adding chain spaces between all of them so it gets a little easier. Bring that tail to the front and chain one to begin. We're beginning on a point. So we make our double crochet in the chain one space. Oops, let me back up again. I want to bring that tail up and over. Now we chain one. Moving over here where we have a flat space. There's no chain one in between those double crochet sets, but you should still be able to see there's a space between them. We will increase in this space, so we make three double crochet, chain one, and three double crochet. All right, we have, I have my yarn stuck on my finger. We have the very first double crochet that's going to be finished at the end of the round. An increase, and now working back into a point again, oops, chain one before, and just make three double crochet chain one before you move on, that's a flat spot. So we make an increase. Three double crochet, chain one, and three double crochet. And you'll see this does still continue to ruffle a bit. it will happen. Chain one, moving on to a point, we only make three double crochet and into your flat spot. You have to watch because that can sort of pucker together a little. Fool your eyes if you start working quickly you spot that chain one space and you say, ooh, let me work into there. Find that space between the sets of double crochet. We increase on flat spots. Chain one. Moving on to the next point. no increase, just three double crochet, chain one to move on and into a flat spot. 
so that means increase chain one and three more double crochet in that space the following rounds from here become simple that's where we work the ruffle out of the pattern and get it to start straightening out after this round there won't be any more increases we'll just simply work the granny stitch around and if you continue to do that round after round eventually it would pull into a hat shape but we're simply going to stop two rounds I believe after this and then on the finished piece that you saw I did make a single crochet border around that I had just enough space in the material to work out one more round that way and I think it put a nice little border on it and that's where we also make the loop for hanging if you want that then I'll show you how to make that and if you don't want that then you can skip it one more time for beginners there's a chain one before the double crochet so here's the top of your very first double crochet and because I talked over that working remember it ends with no increase just two double crochet before that beginning double crochet let's find our tail and bring it forward before I do that this cotton yarn is nice and sticky so let's see if I can pull that off yay and we'll bring that back forward for the next round but if yours is ruffled just like mine don't worry about it we'll be fixing that I'll be including notes in just a moment for the round we just worked it's a great place to pause if you need a chance to catch up and when I come back we will do round four see you soon welcome back before we begin round four I'll show you how to measure your gauge for the life of me I cannot remember I believe I told you at the end of round two I was going to show you that if I did say that then I made a mistake and I apologize at the end of round three our ruffled mess should be able to flatten out if you work it a little bit pull the edges some not too much because you can see it'll pop back up again just smush it there you go now here with my ugly pink ruler from round three from the edge to the edge it's just over four inches depending on where you measure because you see we still have these little spaces that poke out so if you go from one of those places to one of those places you'll have about four and a half inches across 
and if you go from one of the wider spaces to the other side, it's closer to four and three quarters of an inch. And I will measure that out here. That would be 12 centimeters from the widest point, or about 11 centimeters from the narrow places. So it's a dishcloth or a washcloth. And gauge is not terribly important if your size is a little bit different than mine. It's no big deal, but make sure you're not way, way off of that measurement. To begin round four, we will chain one, as always, and make a double crochet in that chain one space. Watch me back up and remember my tail this time. There we go. Now chain one and move right on to the next set in the chain one space. Make three double crochet. Chain one and in the next space make three double crochet. And I think from here you could get the point. It's all chain one and make three double crochet in the next space. We won't increase any more. And it will make a nice flat washcloth out of all those ruffles. You'll be able to see if you didn't flatten your work out to measure the gauge like I did, yours will be very, very ruffly at this point. But you will be able to watch as you work this non-increasing round that it begins to flatten. And you'll even be able to put it down and see exactly from where you worked. It will begin to be flat, but the other side will still have ruffles in it. See, we still have some space here, but if you give it just a little bit of a smush, see that's flat now. And we still have to work the extra material out of the rest of it. So round four, no increases. And round five, no increases. It will be worked the same. But for that very last round that I made on mine, where we make the hanging loop, I used a single crochet stitch there. If you try to go farther than that with a round of double crochet, it will quickly start to curl into that hat shape that we don't want for dishcloth. I think maybe if you had a few ruffles left over in a dishcloth, that would be no big deal. A little extra texture for some scrubbing. But the last two rounds get it very close. And then there's just enough of that extra material in the middle from too many increases that we're able to get a nice flat single crochet border at the end. And I think if you didn't want that, you'd be safe to just add your hanging loop if you want it on round five somewhere in between 
the double crochet or just make an extra big chain space in between. I don't think I would like that. I think it would make a big triangle space versus a nice tight loop space. I don't know. We would have to see what that would look like. Chain one and there's our double crochet. We join the round with a slip stitch and go back. I will go back because I missed my tail. Bring that tail over the hook and join. You'll see it still has some ruffles. It's not all the way flat yet, but we have one more round to go. So if you need time to catch up, I'll be including notes once again in just a moment for this round. And the next round is pretty simple. It's exactly the same. So I'll see you back soon. All right, moving on to round five. We're going to go, hopefully, pretty quickly from here. Chain one, and still working over that tail. Make a double crochet in the first space. Chain one to move on. and make three double crochet in the next space chain one to move on three double crochet and so on don't think I have to repeat myself too much from here Hopefully you've got the idea of the pattern down. Also, hopefully, you can't hear in the background. There's a lot of noise going on outside right now. And I'm sorry if you're having to listen to that. I've been listening to that for the past few days. We live in an area where people have large amounts of property. Houses are not close together. I have to walk. Hmm, let's see. About 600 feet to get to the closest house. But my neighbor, who actually lives the farthest away from any of my neighbors, out back, has got himself an airboat. Yay! He's been out there running it and I've been lucky enough to work on this project creating the video in between his little breaks from his fun but this time he got me so just to tell you in case that noise is in there and if not, it gives me something to talk about while we work this round. As you work around, you may experience a little bit of that curling I told you we don't want. But that's if you're holding the project up when you put it down. 
flatten it out and pick it back up again you should not have that curling that right there is simply the need for a little bit of blocking I'm about to lose my yarn ball off the edge of my table. So sorry, I think I just shoved my project right up in the camera there. And again, it's okay if you're worried about it, if it continues to curl. just put it down, flatten it out, make sure it will straighten itself out. If it curls back up, then you will need some increases somewhere in there. Or perhaps you may want to double check and make sure you haven't missed a few stitches. Sometimes working the granny stitch, I'll be distracted talking or looking at something and I only make two before I move on. And then you look at your pattern and you say, hmm, what's wrong here? Something's not right. But what I have here is right. You can flatten it out. It will stay flattened out, mostly. There's still just a little bit of excess material in there. So we still have a little ruffle. And that's why we're going to work a border around there. So in the next round, as I've mentioned before, if you don't want to make a hanging loop and you just want it to be round, that's fine. I'll show you where you can skip that. When we come back, I will cover the single crochet stitch just in case you're a very, very, very beginner and you're crocheting for the very first time. But we'll go quickly through that and then I'll show you how to finish off the project. Be back soon. And now we're ready to begin the end. If you want to make the hanging loop, I'll show you that just after we begin the pattern. We're not going to chain one at all here. We're just going to work into the next stitch. So if you need to mark your first single crochet, because if I'm not paying attention, I know I'll work over it then go ahead and grab a stitch marker or a scrap of yarn. Working into the next stitch, insert the hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull through both loops. And this is your stitch that you'll want to mark. Here is where we're going to work into for the last stitch right before that single crochet. That's the top of our joining slip stitch. So moving on, I'm going to make just a few single crochet. Make one in each stitch. And where I like to make my hanging loop is so that it is in the middle of a double crochet set. So I make a single crochet and I think about 10 is a good number for a loop. Now into the next stitch, make a single crochet. If you want to chain 10 or more if you need a bigger loop then that's fine, but I originally tried to make a chain 5 
when I did this pattern and it was a tiny little loop I did not like that because this is going to actually be a washcloth and not a dishcloth but I think maybe for a dishcloth you might want a shorter loop than that so from there we're just going to continue making a single crochet in every single stitch make one single crochet all the way around and as I work around I will explain my method for why we have used a chain one at the beginning of rounds and now this round we don't do anything that's because well, let me back up and go back to a long long time ago I was a self-taught beginner and every book I read said chain three for a double crochet so I did it and for the longest time I always did that and I was afraid to do anything else I designed my own patterns with that chain three and then looked at it and went oh I hate that gap why does it leave that gap and I think many crocheters search for a solution to the chain three gap when working with double crochet I finally, it took me so long, I finally got over my fear and I worked a few patterns that used the chain two. And then you skip the chain two and make a double crochet. And in the round, that works great. There's no gap. It looks great from the front side. When you flip it over, you'll see all of your chain twos popping up going back to your beginning round and you go well I guess maybe that's not really too much better so it didn't take me too long to get over my fear of getting away from the chain two and I started experimenting with using a chain one and I found out that not only does it eliminate both the gap of the chain three and that popped up seam of the chain two, you know how, let's use granny square for an example because that's the famous one. When you change colors, when you work around on a granny square, eventually when it gets so big you'll see that it twists around. Here's one square and then the next one will be kind of like that and then the next one will be kind of like that. And that's because crochet stitches lean to the side. If you're left-handed, they would lean to the other side. And not only does working that chain one eliminate a gap, but it also works to pull your beginning double crochet back to the other side again and although if you continued working a granny square pattern on and on eventually you're still going to have some of that twist unless you use a different trick to avoid it it really does in smaller projects do so much if you use a chain one to pull that double crochet over and avoid that twisting and at the beginning of this pattern I'm getting close to my first single crochet so I want to pay attention here I've eliminated making a chain one for a single crochet for the same reason I find you don't actually need a chain there we will work into that joining slip stitch from the previous round I know I've got that fuzz of a tail sticking out there 
make the last single crochet here next to it you can see I'm losing my light again so maybe you can't see very well but you can see the vertical bars of the first single crochet and there it is now I'll give you a moment to catch up just in case you need it I'm gonna try to straighten this out a little bit and when I come back don't join with a slip stitch I'm going to show you a trick be back soon alright the final step before you have to weave in ends I want to whine about that I don't want to sew anyways cut the yarn leaving yourself probably about a six inch tail a little longer if you want and pull the tail through that last stitch. Don't pull tight though. Move those scissors out of the way. We don't need those distracting us. Me talking is enough to distract us, right? <laughs> now in our first single crochet that we did not join, bring the tail under the loops forward and this is why you don't want to pull that last stitch tight there right here we will create by going through the top of that stitch we create a false stitch that you can pull somewhat tight get it as close as possible to match the gauge of the rest of the stitches and after you straighten that out just a little bit you'll see there's no bump from joining it's nice and straight there I'm going to take just a second to trim this fuzzy tail sticking out because it's in the way. Now you can follow where your yarn comes down. You can see where stitches go. Does that make sense? Any sense at all? follow the direction of the yarn you'll see where it comes out and goes back in I come around for a false loop and then I fake the rest find the spot that you can pull the tail through many loops at one time and you save yourself a little bit of time there I'm going to come back around to the front if you can find a place where you can find where you can see that the loop goes underneath and try to work through there so you can work the tail in more than one direction and give it a little more stability but from there I really just fake it all and pull through a bunch of loops all you have to do is make sure that you're not leaving a big length of thread sticking out if you've missed a space in this cotton yarn 
is nice and sticky. I call it sticky. It sticks to itself. It's pretty soft. But does that make sense if I say it's pretty soft but it feels rough at the same time? It's not scratchy, like itchy. If you were to make something wearable with this, it wouldn't be itchy, but it's not soft either. It has texture. Sort of like denim. So, give it a little pull back and forth here and there. Make sure that the tail's tight in there. And if your tail gets short, you can take your needle out and run through those big areas of stitches. I like to go underneath the sets of the granny stitch with the three double crochet there. And then leave your eye sticking out, thread the tail back through it, and pull through. And that's quite enough. So, oh my goodness, in the camera, I cannot find my tail at all. It's like it's gone. I have to lean over around it so I can see what I'm doing. There we go. Trim that end. And as it is now, it looks a little bit sloppy. The one I showed you, I don't usually do this. I do like to leave a project raw when I show it to you and not wash it or block it first. So you can see sometimes they're not so pretty when they come out right off the hook. But this one I did wash and block already because I wanted to see what would happen. I've worked with this cotton yarn before and I had a little bit of a pro- well I had two problems with it actually. Problem number one is the label warns you, wash the colors separately. It does bleed. You will have purple all over your white if you mix them together. And the second problem I had was it does shrink a tiny bit. And I washed this in cold water. So. I'm curious to find out what will happen if it comes into contact with hot water because you can see right here it's just a little bit smaller than the one I made right now and that's because I measured it before I washed it. It did shrink when I washed it in cold water. I have other washcloths that I've used or I'm sorry that I've made with this yarn and they have been washed in hot water and it pilled up a little bit but I didn't notice any major shrinking on it I just noticed that seems like it's smaller than how I made it so beware of that depending on the yarn that you use it may turn out slightly smaller in the end and I think you can even see in my poor lighting that that one is a little bit lighter colored because of the dye bleeding out Beware of that. That's all. Otherwise, it's a dishcloth or a washcloth. Make it in a day. Use it. Wear it out. Have fun. Make another. Give them away as gifts. Encourage people to use them and not hang them on their walls. <laughs> well then, I hope you've enjoyed your time during this video. I hope it was informative enough that you can complete your project. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you've liked everything you've seen here today. And also don't forget to subscribe for more videos. You can follow me for more over on the Crochets the Way blog. You'll find free written patterns, tutorials, and a lot of me rambling on about crazy things. Thank you so much for sticking with me this far. I hope you have a wonderful day and happy crocheting.